Many schools across Canada are struggling to get the resources and funding needed to help students with special needs. Dr. Stuart Shanker explains that schools and the government are trying to keep up with the demand. The reality is that more and more families are finding themselves in a real quandary. Their child's received some sort of a diagnosis. Everything they read tells them that their child will benefit significantly from having something like a, an educational assistant, special therapeutic services, individual educational plan. Yet it's getting harder and harder to access these services. The big source of the problem here is that ministries of education, school districts are under such severe financial constraints these days. And so we have to balance off the demands for special needs kids with all of the other costs. Another complicated factor is that there is not always consensus when it comes to the type of intervention that is needed, says Susan Hopkins. There are different approaches going on in education. Different experts are calling for different things. It happens a lot. And sometimes as a, as a teacher and I'm sure as a parent, you get caught in the crossfire of 10 different experts speaking for, for different approaches. Until more funding and resources are available, both Dr. Shanker and Susan Hopkins believe schools, teachers, parents, and children need to find ways to cope. Dr. Shanker advocates for a technique called self-regulation in which children with special needs learn to recognize their stressors and manage them. The challenge I think that we faced is how do we cope in the meantime? How do we respond to this crisis in such a way that we can help these kids as we try to find the resources that we need? Self-regulation relies on finding unique, individual ways of helping a child with special needs, explains Dr. Shanker. There are lots of things we can do to help the child with special needs, even in the classroom. Special cushions for their seat. We can give them fidget toys that help calm the nervous system down. Even something as simple as letting the child go to school with an iPad. And now when the child is becoming very anxious, they can, they can do FaceTime with their mom or dad to get that calming influence as and when they need it. And what we found was that even low-functioning children with autism at the age of three can develop this kind of self-awareness. Susan Hopkins strongly believes that the most underused experts are the parents themselves. There's a lot parents can do, they age. I think they're a great partner. When, when you can come around and realize that you can have different opinions, you may feel like you're a thorn in the side of, of the school and the teacher and so on, but most teachers and most administrators will welcome a parent who does that as long as it's done respectfully because it's just a sign of standing up. Dr. Shanker believes that such techniques will not only enable schools to cope, but that they are triggering a push for more evidence-based science. A lot of this is very new science stuff that we've only been able to figure out in the last 15 years. But it is new science and it is transforming our understanding of what we can do to genuinely help these kids, to genuinely change their trajectory. Government is hungry for proper studies that will guide them, adds Dr. Shanker. Proper evidence will help schools and elected officials in allocating the limited resources that they have in order to maximize the impact on children's education. I think we have to do a properly controlled experiments in which we assess whether or not certain programs or methods are effective and if they are, how, how much so. I think government is aware of all this. I think they want it. And government is overwhelmed by people knocking on their door saying, look, I've got a study. So what we need is we need a proper conduit which is able to help them separate the wheat from the chaff. It's up to the scientists to show the government that the cost benefit of a child receiving these kinds of support or assess of what it may cost us per year. For Evidence Network, I'm Melanie Holoboski.